Hi, we've got another video today from Pam's Flower Garden. We are going to do a vertical suspension. So it is going to look somewhat like this, and I'm going to take you through the process. I saw this, um, and it's another Canadian designer. Her name is Hitomi, I think it's her last name is Gilliam. Anyway, she's very cool, has tons of really neat mechanics, and just very, very interesting. So these are little water tubes wrapped in raffia, and then they have um, just a skewer uh, on the bottom that we've uh, put on there. We've drilled some holes into this 4x4, and then we just arranged this little vertical ID on here with some grapevine around it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a step-by-step -step and how to do this. Um, so here's just a typical water tube, and there's just a regular skewer that we're going to use. I'm going to take some of the Oasis adhesive strips, and I'm just going to cut one in half. So these are a double-sided sticky. So it's sticky on one side and sticky on the other. So I'm just going to put that right there, okay? So that just has that. Then I'm going to just take the skewer, press it into that, and that's kind of the basis for this particular thing right here. So we have some raffia here, which I'm just going to double up. Oops. And I'll just start to wrap this around. Pretty simple. You, could, you don't have to use raffia. You could use uh, material. You could use wool. I mean, anything that would cover this up, and it's basically just to cover up your mechanics and just make it look a little bit nicer so it's not just um, the tube sitting there. And just clean up, clean up that a little bit. So that's what you're going to end up with. So what we're going to do with these, because they will hold water, and that's going to be our water source for our vertical installation. So over here, I have just a four by four piece of wood that was left over in my garage. And I've taken a drill and just drilled some random holes in the base. So you wanna go probably about an inch down so that your skewer is going to sit fairly steadily. Um, some, you could actually put a little bit of glue in there, like hot glue, or you could put you know, one of the U-glue dashes in there just to make sure that it sticks in. So I've done a number of those and then just placed them into the pre-drilled holes that I've made and put those in there. And to make this a little bit more solid, I've got this structure on top. So it's grapevine and it's got a few bamboo little poles here. And I've attached it with bind wire onto the tubes with the skewers. So that's the basis. So this is a smaller one that I was just playing around with because I just wanted to try it out and uh, see if I could make an installation with it, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to take this away and I'm going to bring a bigger piece. So we're just going to cut out for just a second and I'll bring over the bigger piece and we'll chat about that. Okay, we'll be right back. Hi. Okay, so here's this super interesting piece of driftwood and it had been hanging out in my parent backyard for about the last 40 years and my dad decided that I could use it. So I thought this would be a really cool vertical installation with same thing with these little water tubes with the raffia and the skewers on them. And again, I just drilled random holes all over here. And I think we have like 10 or 11, 12 of these in there. So, and then I've, I've got this stick here and I put some skewers in here. And the reason I did that is um, the wire wasn't enough structure to actually hold it good and solid once I get greenery and flowers and things like that in. So I've got a stick, a curly little stick through here that I've bound wire onto some of them. And then you can see in between some of these, I've got the skewers that I've wired onto those. So it just gives it a little bit more stability, which I think is kind of cool. So I am going to green this up and flower it and um, we'll just see what we come up with. So I've got some Tillandsias here, which are very cool and super popular right now. And I just thought I would put those in here just to soften the edges a bit and um, just make it look a little bit more organic. So there's one right down there in the front and I'm just going to put maybe another one, even just under here and we'll maybe moss that, do some little moss guys around it. Just to make it look like if we had this on a table and we moss the whole table, it would look pretty cool and just look like it's more partly growing inside there. So you get the idea of what we're going to do with that. 
This is obviously a huge arrangement. Where could you put a, something like this in your home? Oh, or? yeah, you could put it maybe if you had a nice big entranceway table or maybe outside under a gazebo. Um, I mean, lots of different places. I guess your imagination can just run away with you what you could do with it. And I mean, I'm flowering it and greening it, but you could also do... Like we talked before, Kate, about just doing all plants in there. So we could do, you know, ivies or any type of vine or the amaranthus. Anything like that would look really interesting, too. So what I'm going to do then, I've got a selection of flowers and some greenery back here. I'm just going to start um, greening it. So this is asparagus fern, which is really kind of interesting. It's very feathery and light, really beautiful. And I have put water with uh, flower food in these tubes prior so that it's giving it hydration but it's also giving it a little bit of food too. Um, so I think, oh I forgot to talk about the wire. So we have this design wire in here too. So it's a very um, pliable wire which is nice because you can just play around with it and you can get all those neat curves and curly cues and it also secondarily it gives it some structure as well. So this is, there's no, not really a rhyme or reason, I just want to try to keep it somewhat vertical and suspend it over top of this really cool uh, driftwood. And you can see that this is, you know, this seems very heavy, heavy, but it's actually quite light because it's, uh, it's been out bleached in the sun for so long, there isn't a whole lot of weight to it. I'm going to redo this one over here. So you can use the wire to somewhat dictate where your greenery is going and it'll keep it in that neat line. The wires are really cool sort of juxtaposition between the metallic kind of colors and the natural elements of the driftwood and the plant yeah, material. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, and it, it is a nice contrast because you get that kind of artsy thing with the wire, but then you've got this very organic um, driftwood piece. And it, again, I think that lime green color, it's just nice because it, it goes with pretty much everything. Okay, so there's just the green. So you can see how this is going to start to come together. And I've got a little bit of sweet pea and it's just the vine. So there's no sweet peas on it, it's just the vine. And uh, I'll just add that to it too. And again, I'll just follow the line of the structure. I think that's what we want to keep in mind, that we're just, we want to keep everything kind of flowing this way. And I mean, anything goes in something like this. I think it's really, the materials you have on hand, um, and really just your creativity with whatever you'd like to do with it. I mean, this is a pretty big one. You may want to start with a smaller one, like we did a little sample one before, and just get the hang of it. But it's just so many possibilities for interesting stuff with this. It's just very, okay. very cool. And if something doesn't actually go where you want it to, we've got a bit of bind wire here from Oasis. So that's that, I've used it before and it's like a paper covered wire. So say this doesn't really want to go where I want it to, I can just put a little bind wire on here and I'll make it go where I like just to give a little bit of an arch there. Well, we were talking earlier, Kate and I were talking earlier that if anybody has, we're trying to do more of these videos, but if anybody has a suggestion uh, for a video that they'd like to see, we would be happy to kind of entertain the idea and see if we can make one for you. And here I've got some really gorgeous local green tail amaranthus. So that's pretty cool. And it's again, it's so totally different. So you've got that very ferny mic and the sweet pea is a little bit heavier. This one's very feathery and light, but it gives another, another uh, different look, different feel. Kind of neat because you can go it's got a lot of depth in here because you're, you're not just on a flat surface you're going into quite a few different little nooks and crannies okay okay and 
this this green tail is I don't know I just love it. Yeah, it's got sure. such a lot of interest okay. and flow. We can do that. It's nice that it's right. you can actually you. see the impact of the amaranthus in an arrangement like that. Sometimes when you have it hanging down the size, side of a vase, you get like some of the stems in the background. You don't notice it as much, but right. this it's really showing off. It's uh, okay. it's just the lovely lines, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right now, yeah, it's kind of highlighting um, the flower, isn't it? So I'm just kind of spreading this through just to get uh, a little bit of balance through the arrangement. Sure. Actually, okay, so here. the six inch, the six inch would be really good because it's sort of about. Um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. interesting. So that you can see how it's taking so shape like pretty quickly. Like it's box. it's got a nice two line two to it. And I think I'll use some of this Dusty Miller. Yes. This is also local. <laughs> grown by us, which is kind of nice. So again, with something like this, if you're putting all this fresh product in, you know, every couple of days I would take a little water bottle and give the tubes a drink. These are, these are bigger water tubes, but you know, they can only hold so much. And a lot of these greens are fairly thirsty. So you want to make sure that it's still to stay well hydrated. The greens are so beautiful and the contrast of colors is so nice. You could almost leave it with just the greenery and it would be yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's kind of true. Like, when do you stop, right? We're not going to stop. <laughs> We're going to keep going. We need one more piece. It's hard for me to see from behind here, but we'll just kind of guess at what I'm doing. All right, so we have now four different types of greens in there, um, well, including the amaranthus, but, okay, so, this is kind of cool just by itself, like you said, Kate, it's just kind of a nice, simple color palette, and it really, it is pretty zowie, and I think it picks up the tillandsia, too, and those air ferns, you know, you don't really have to do a whole lot to them. Do you want to tell us the care on the air ferns, Kate? Yeah, so air ferns are really easy going. They like to be soaked for about 20 minutes once a week. Um, and then if you really want to, you can spritz them with a little water bottle every day and they really enjoy that. Just with these big zero graphica types, make sure that after you're done soaking them, you hold them upside down to let all the water drip out to avoid having them rot. Yeah, so pretty easy care. So I'm just tucking in some of these really gorgeous, again, local dahlias that we grew ourselves. How long have you been growing flowers for the shop now, Pam? Oh, quite a few years, but lately it seems to be getting more. <laughs> but it's kind of fun because it's nice to see the flower instead of it coming in a box, which is great. We have fantastic suppliers and they do love, we, you know, we couldn't do without them. But it's kind of nice to see something grow from seed and then see what you can make with it. So those are the dahlias. This is Lysianthus. I believe this is also Ontario grown. I'll just show Rachel a little close up of that. And again, a really nice long lasting cut flower. So the color palette I'm using today is all going to be in these pinks and purples and limes, that type of thing, which I think is, I mean, it's just very rich. that looking on that end, Kate? It's beautiful to me. <laughs> That's good. Good, good. So you can see as you add a little bit more color, I mean, some people might be like, oh, it's too much. But sometimes it's just nice to explore. I haven't, I haven't actually flowered one of these before. This is my first time doing this one. I made it at home a couple of weeks ago and uh, we just haven't had a chance to actually put anything in it. So it's kind of nice just to play around with it and see what happens. It's nice having those bright colors right now, just before going into fall, where yeah. we're going to see all those burnt oranges and yeah. those deeper colors. It's nice to have one more pop of, of like color the for last, the end of the year. Yeah, like the last hurrah for summer, right? Mm -hmm. So here's some beautiful stock, which is lovely too. An extremely long lasting cut flower. 
And if you get it in your cut bouquet or if you get it in an arrangement, you know, if you take most of the greenery off, it's actually going to last you a lot longer. Okay. And again, when I'm cutting things, I'm doing it with a really sharp knife. Um, or if you don't have very good knife skills, you can uh, use a good pair of flower shears, which <laughs> would do the trick too. All right. Okay. Some of this is getting a little too upright for me. I kind of want it to go down more. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I know a lot of people don't like carnations, but this is a purpley colored carnations. It's in a series called the Moon Series, and it's one of the newer colors. And I think it's just, you know what? Carnations don't have to be just red or white or pink. They've got some really beautiful new colors that are just saturated um, with just a beautiful color tone. I think carnations are really making a comeback as well. I agree. Yeah. They, they went out of fashion for a little while. I mean, they were always beautiful, but um, oh, people okay. are really starting to use them a lot more in their work. Yeah. And I think it's because they're developing so many more colors too. Okay. Like they've got, you know, their striped ones and uh, two tones, and there's just so many more interesting carnations available right now. Now here I've got some little china asters, which are really cute too, which are also local. And these have really been coming back in style again, too, and more people seem to be using them. And it's just a very delicate, very delicate little bloom. It's, it's kind of dancey. It's got a little sway to it, which is nice. Um, yes, I am. You do. The color of them is incredible. Yeah, it's a really pretty pink, isn't it? <laughs> you have a shangri So you can see the colors are blending really quite, quite pretty. It's just a nice, nice simple. So I'm going to have to come around to okay. the front in a minute just to see what I've got going on here because I've got a completely different view back here. We need the gerbs or not? I don't think it really needs it. How does it look out there? No, it's kind of nice with the, the more delicate flowers. Yeah. I'm just going to have a quick peek around here just to see what you guys are seeing. And yeah. Oh, I'm kind of liking that. So, what we could do too, just to maybe pull the color in a bit, um, in with a couple of water tubes, you know, what we could do is even just tuck, if you had that in a water tube just to pull your color down into um, the base and just make it flow a bit more. We could tuck a little bit of that in there too. So I haven't put water tubes on here, but it'll give you the idea at least. So if we water tube that, then it would have a water source. We'll just tuck, tuck these in like that. So it gives it some weight down here with the Tillandsia, which I think is kind of nice. it makes the air ferns seem more intentional with everything. It's really great. Yeah, to definitely. Yeah, that's, that's kind of pretty. So if we had a little bit more moss too, I think, you know what, just moss this up a little bit more just to give it, it'll soften some edges and uh, give it just a little bit more earthy, natural look. And I think we're pretty much done on there. I'm quite liking it, although we've got a little bit of a lean going on here, but you know what? So you can see the flow that's kind of going from one to the other. And I don't know, I think that turned out really nicely. So you could also, like we chatted about before, you could also do green plants in it or yeah, all just greenery. Yeah, so, so, um, so many different things that you could do with it, just I'll your imagination to sure takes you wherever you want it to go. So that is our vertical install. Um, on this really amazing piece of driftwood. So if you like to go in the woods or if you're maybe walking along the shoreline, you might see a kind of an interesting piece of wood or bark or whatever. Or if you don't have that, you could do like I simply did before with a 4x4 block, just as long as it's got something solid that you can drill um, for your little uh, water pick skewers to go into. So hope you've enjoyed this video and we will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.
We would love to hear from you if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future videos. We also post photos daily on Instagram and Facebook, so check us out at Pan's Flower Garden.